So you were just a delivery captain on a boat going from Marsh Harbor, Bahamas to the Supposed to be to Marsh Florida. Harbor, Bahamas to, to uh, North Carolina. Oh yeah. Upon arrival, the engine was locked up. The boat yard that was charged was carrying for the vessel and finishing a punch list did basically nothing. Uh -huh. I won't mention any names. So you arrived thinking that the boat would be ready to go. Just uh, I had a little bit of rigging repairs to do because it sat on the hard through Hurricane Irene. Yeah, yeah I figured it was good to go. So the engine ended up consuming half our day. Wow. Who'd you have for crew? The owner of the boat, his brother-in-law, and nephew. I, even though you didn't have an engine at all, you still chose to leave the Bahamas and head for the States. Yeah, it didn't appear to me that the engine was ever going to get repaired where it was. Uh, they had it a year. It's, a, it's an unusual diesel. It's a Lombardini. Not a lot of people are familiar with them, although they're just they're nothing fancy. But getting anything done you know, outside the country, especially you know, on island nations, would be a bit of a hair pulling exercise. So we decided that this boat needed to get at least to the U.S. mainland. But knowing we were going to be leaving without an engine, I said, well, we'll make for the nearest port of services, basically Fort Lauderdale or West Palm. And I didn't want to have to buck the stream sailing down to Fort Lauderdale. So we just took off on a northwest tangent towards West Palm and let the stream push us up. Boy, it must have been really frustrating for the owner to realize that they're just not going to get it done. He took it in stride. Much angrier than, than he was uh, at the uh, yard. How long did that voyage take from the time you left Mark Harbor? Too long. We either had not enough wind or way too much. We never just had a nice 15 knots. We didn't even bother to repair the autopilot, which we burned the motor out last year on the way down. We brought a new motor with us, and I said, well, if we're not going to fix the diesel, there's no sense in fixing the autopilot and wasting the time. I guess without an engine, you wouldn't be able, wouldn't to... Be able to charge the batteries adequately to rely on the autopilot. It turned out the conditions we were in, that wheel pilot would not have been up to the test. What was your watch rotation like? Two hours. We at one point we had eight or ten large commercial vessels around us in the dark oh. of night. We had to have two people on watch. Albert Rossi's uh, glass windshields yep. had to have a headlamp on because we didn't want to backlight the instruments. You know, the chart plotter was going as well, but because of that glare, the helmsman could not really see out. So a second person had to be able to stick their head above the hard top to see the ships in the dark. God, so you needed two people on watch, one to be at the helm and the other to watch for ships? Just for that section, wow. which also was horrible weather, the sustained 30, 35 knot winds, the seas eventually built up in Northwest Providence Channel. So yeah, it was not a fun time, but we got through it, and then uh, now it's at a yard in West Palm. Yeah, it was a bit of a judgment call on my part. Yep. We could have all just got on a plane, the boat wasn't ready. And it's always interesting to leave someplace already with a broken engine. Now, theoretically, if we would have gone to the north and ridden the stream, we, we could have made Beaufort in three to four days. Yeah. I so said that would not be prudent to, to, to go that far with, with no engine relying completely on just solar to replenish the batteries. I said, but we will make West Palm. And they questioned that. They said, hey, if we're going that far, why not another day? Now, after the delivery, they were like, <laughs> they understood why we didn't try to go to Beaufort. Um, so sometimes as a delivery skipper, you just gotta put your foot down.